I'm out of red buffalo and this is some of the native plants that Jack has. A huge variety of things. Uh, there's three big racks here. Today he's actually having a plant sale at the farm. So people are wandering around looking at, their, looking at his plants. I'm going to pan over here and get his two, two of his greenhouses. Another greenhouse back behind the house where he propagates and, and uh, maintains his plants. Okay, Jack, I, maybe I can ask you a few questions about sure. your operation. Sure. What kind of things you got here? Um, these are all native northeastern Illinois, uh, southeastern Wisconsin, prairie, woodland, wetland plants. Uh, we collect a lot of the seed from our restoration, which is out back. You can see part of it behind the barn. Um, and we get seed from uh, other people in the neighborhood who have uh, restorations or, or uh, remnant uh, natural areas. Now, so. these, these plants, Jack, that would have been here like 100 years ago or 50 years ago? Yeah, these are, these are the plants that uh, were here um, growing naturally before European settlement in the, uh, well, in this area in the 18, early 1800s. Um, they, when we do a lot of restoration, the, a lot of the reasons why they're not here today is because, uh, because of farming, because of the, uh, cessation of the, uh, wildfires or the controlled burns that would come through here that would be set by the Native Americans. Um, so a lot of our natural areas and because of uh, European weeds that have come in. So uh, um, by planting these plants and uh, recreating the, the conditions that existed prior to settlement, we can uh, allow these plants to survive and not become extinct. One of the things I've heard about, Jack, is the, the drought resistance and things like that that the native plants have. Is that true? Well, definitely there, you know, there were a lot of varying conditions in this area from your gravel hills to your wet sedge meadows. So there's definitely a lot of uh, variety of plants that evolved on those gravel hills with a lot of drought conditions. Um, and there's also plants that evolved in wet areas. So, so yeah, when we recreate a native prairie or natural area, we try to uh, select the plants that um, are appropriate for the conditions that exist there, whether it be drought, wet, sun, shade, um, so that the homeowner or landowner doesn't have to do a lot of watering or other maintenance. So Jack, do you go out to places and recommend plants for people? Sure, sure. I do that all the time. I go out to places, I recommend plants, recommend um, what plants are invasive that they, they currently have that they need to get rid of and how to get rid of them and, and whether, to, whether it's more economical, economical to, do, to plant seed or to plant plants. Okay. Jack, could you just give me a pick up a plant here and tell me a little bit about it? Maybe that'd be interesting <laughs> for our listeners here. Some unusual plant maybe that you have. An, that you... an unusual plant. Okay. Okay. Let me go right here. Don't don't trip over the fence there. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is this is this doesn't look too well at the moment. This is a common valerian. Um it's a rare fen species. It, uh, so maybe better tell people what a fen is, Jack. Well, a, a fen is, uh, is a wetland that is high in um, calcium, magnesium. The water flows through the glacial till and uh, picks up the minerals. So it's a very basic um, environment okay. as opposed to most uh, or many wetlands and, and average conditions which are okay. part, partly acidic. So this is uh, common valerian. In the uh, springtime, it gets uh, 
It's one of the earliest uh, flowering plants in the sedge meadow in the spring. It gets uh, little yellow flowers and it pops up. It's a, it's a good indicator that um, you're dealing with a remnant natural area that has been relatively undisturbed. So, How so tall does it get? It gets about uh, three, two and a half, two, three feet tall. With an early flower? Yeah, yellow okay. flower. Anything else you think we should know about here? Well, uh, yeah, you should know about all of that. <laughs> <laughs> right next to it is, there, all our plants are displayed by uh, alphabetic order in uh, scientific. Okay. Um, and I'm still getting signs up. But uh, right next to it is uh, um, common spiderwort, which is... Now that one I've heard of. Yeah, that's, a, that's sort of familiar to a lot more people. Um, gets a nice... Uh, purple uh, flower in the springtime. Each flower lasts for one day, but each, each plant will produce many little flowers so it can bloom for quite a while. And it's a very pretty one and it's, uh, it's this is actually adapted for drier conditions. Drier conditions, yeah. Gravelly, yeah. Now you got something about really growing gravel around here. You got anything like that? Well, the spiderwort, we got uh, some grasses, little blue stems, Grandma, they grow in gravel. Because um, a lot of the, the subdivisions, they take all the good topsoil off of there, and so they're working with pretty poor soil. Right, right. Um, rough blazing star, smooth blue aster. Um, should I move over? Oh, it might be better over there, yeah. <laughs> um, so, rough blazing star, smooth blue aster. Uh, and uh, prairie drop seed, um, the prairie drop seed, the side oats gram and the little blue, blue stem are grasses that grow in the gravel and then there's also a lead plant we have that grows in the gravel. It's a uh, legume, fixes nitrogen. Wow, it's good for your soil too. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. Okay, Jack. Well, thanks for coming to the Woodstock Farmer's Market and it's good to see you here today. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>